In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Today being the Annunciation of the Theotokos uh, from the Archangel Gabriel, it's a day where we contemplate, and the fathers of the church also write about the impossible being made possible. And as in true fashion of a celebration of a feast day, I saw one of the altar boys come into the altar today tanned, and uh, I immediately noticed his, his coloration was different, like he went somewhere nice, and I said, where did you go? And he said, I went to Florida. And, I, and then the next thing that came out of his mouth was, I was bit by a pelican. And I stood there for a moment hearing that and trying to process this pelican, and he showed me where the pelican bit him on the back of the leg. And I, I was like, how is that even possible? And then I remember that today, we remember the impossible being made possible, but the possible being made by the power of God. The things that we can't conceive coming to fruition because of God. St. Nikolai Velomirovich, who we uh, visited his tomb during our, our Lenten retreat that we had as we went to see St. Mardarios as well, writes that today, when God created light, he created something that we didn't even know about. He created light, and how do we know what light was going to be? How do we know what water was going to be, or the earth, or even the heavens, which we have not seen in its fullness, how do we know what that is other than God wants it to be that way and has made all things possible by merely his thoughts? He thinks and therefore it becomes. He touches and therefore we have life. And as we think of today, of this beautiful day, of this humble example of dedication to God, of purity, of holiness, of submission to the will of God in the person of the Virgin Mary, we see that even she, in her great prayerfulness and her dedication to God, asks him, how is this possible? How is it possible, since I don't have a husband, to bear a child? And as we know from her life, she was dedicated to the temple as a small child and wanted to remain dedicated to the temple in her pureness and her virginity for her entire life. And they brought men by to uh, preserve that purity that she wanted, that dedication that she wanted. And they brought these 12 men to her. And ultimately, by God's grace, Joseph was chosen to care for her but not to have her as a married wife as we would consider in contemporary day and age, but merely to care for her and to have her in his home as one that he could continue to provide her the opportunities to pray for this beautiful life that she had within the temple that continued on the outside as being betrothed to Joseph. But she asks the angel, Archangel Gabriel, the one who is here on our icon screen on your right side, she asks him, how is this possible? And he says such a, a poignant one sentence line that brings it all into perspective for all of us when we think the impossible uh, is the only path that we will receive and the impossible is the only thing that we'll ever be, we'll be facing for the rest of our life the impossible, I can't do it, it won't get done, it's never going to happen. He says in one sentence, with God, all things are possible. And you think of that sentence that he says, and we might say that to ourselves, well, with God, all things are possible. But you have to understand that Archangel Gabriel has seen the other side. He is in the kingdom of God, praising God, and at the, at the right, in the immediate presence of our Lord in the kingdom of heaven, and sent to send this divine message, the first words to this new life of all of us that comes through the life of Christ, he has that message first. And he knows 
that just the word to say, I mean, if you could think of this conversation for a second and, and put yourself as a, a, a witness in the kingdom of heaven and God saying to him, Archangel Gabriel, here's what you're going to do for me today. You're going to go to this woman named Mary and you're going to tell her that she is going to bear the son of God. What a message. What a, a massive message to impact not only the history at that time, but the history of the entire world. To be able to come and to deliver this message to this pure woman and say that in you is going to be born the Son of God. And the greatness of that message, that greatness of that mission that she had to bear the Son of God. Because even the angels, as we see in the, the writings of the church, in the hymnology for the Virgin Mary, in the Akathist hymn, in the uh, Paraclesis towards the Virgin, to the Virgin Mary, we see that even the angels look with awe on her. And we see in the icon here up at the top left, the first one, you see Archangel Gabriel. It's very similar to this one. This one, she's standing. And the archangel's there, but that one she's sitting to show that her purity was such that she could sit and receive that message from the archangel. But we see that that message was also met with a, the questioning of how can this be? And even in the greatness of her prayer, she still asks that question, not as a doubt that God can't do anything or can't do what he wants, but as how will this happen? How can this happen? Because I am still a virgin. I am not married. I don't have a husband. I'm just betrothed to a man who is taking care of me. And he says that line, with God all things are possible. Knowing that he has seen the kingdom. Knowing that he has heard the voice of God in his ear to tell her, think of the power. And think of that verse, not as with God, all things are possible. I mean, how many times have we heard that thrown around, right? Do unto others as others you'd want them to do to you. But think of the angel saying, with God, all things are possible. Knowing and seeing the greatness of God. And that is the message that we bring today through the, the life of the church, is that no matter what we are going through, we cannot think that things will be impossible for us. Even the things that are beyond our comprehension, the creation of light, as St. Nikolai says, the creation of light was beyond our comprehension. It's beyond our understanding what God's full idea of creation was because we are part of that creation. So in our lives, how can we possibly see what God wants possible for us when we are merely part of that creation, looking to God for everything. And as Christ reminds us, without him, nothing is possible. Without God, we would not even be breathing. But with him, all things are possible. And I want you to think about the things in your life that you feel are insurmountable. The, the difficulties, the trials, the things that you cannot get past the things that you feel are just being pushed in your face or you cannot move around it, whether it's an illness, whether it's a job, whether it's life in general, whether it's a difficulty with a relationship, whatever it is that you feel is impossible and will never change, reach out to God and say, whatever your will is, whatever you deem that you want possible, make it so in my life. And in submitting to that, we release ourselves from the own perception, from our own perception of what we think the outcome is going to be, and we release ourselves to the will of God, to the outcome that he sees is best for us, that he sees is salvific for us, that leads us to salvation. The Virgin Mary didn't wake up one day and say, gee, I really hope and I aspire to be the, the mother of God. She never had that in her mind in her life and then this great message comes and changes all of history and changes her life for in, in such a extraordinary way that she now becomes our mother our intercessor for eternity 
So think about what the things are in your life that are holding you down and release them to God and say, whatever you want it to be, make it so and make it according to your will. Amen.